Friends, 
Uh, welcome back to Here As You Should Know. Uh, I'm Allegra, and joining me this week, you may know her as Agent Boomer, Agent Frost, or more recently as Snooval. It's Amanda. It's Snoovy, y'all. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so late to the party. I'm so happy to be here. I'm just happy you're here. Uh, yeah, so Here As You Should Know, this is what we are. Uh, it's I like to call it the Double Nerd Show, uh, where I find interesting folks from history be they uh warriors scientists uh entertainers what have you mm -hmm. and i do a lot of research on them and then i turn them into D, D characters because of course i do um it's a great time it's a lot of fun nerd times and i i'm just so happy you're here i i i, I i'm really excited about who we're about to say we're announcing it was so much fun She's so fantastic. I will, I will let you do the introductions. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so it's really hot in LA now, but we're going to talk about a cool lady. Oh, nice. Terrib not, oh, not at all. Oh, really terrible. Yeah. Truly oh, awful. Wow. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about Junko Tabe, uh, who is a Japanese author, mountaineer, and teacher. So here we go. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, terrible. Absolutely. I'm I'm mad at myself for that one. You're welcome. I but I thought of it earlier and I couldn't get out of my head, so I had to say it out loud at least once so that it wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And now I regret all my life choices. Anyway, Junko Tabe, incredible yes. woman. She oh. was born uh Junko Ishibashi September twenty second, nineteen thirty nine in Miharu, Fukushima, Japan. Uh, and she is the fifth of seven children. Um, yeah. Growing up, she was called frail, um, but began mountain climbing at age 10 after a class trip to Mount Nasu. Uh, now, mountain climbing is a very expensive hobby, especially for a small human. Uh, and her family didn't have a lot of money. Um, and so she only got to do a few climbs uh, before she was in, by the time she was in high school. I was going to say, this what is school? also. What school program allowed this? I'm like, yeah. just then again, it's like, I'm thinking like 2020. I'm like, hold on, rock climbing children. <laughs> no. Viability, <laughs> it's everywhere. I, it's awesome. Yeah, like back in the 40s, totally. Sure. <laughs> Throw yeah. those kids on a mountain. It's fine. I love, I love, uh, I haven't gone outdoor rock climbing, but I've done indoor. It is so much fun yes. and the best leg workout you'll ever receive. So yes. I'm, yes. When Tell we can me go more. places. Let's go together. Don't say that. Don't. don't are you serious? Don't, don't pretend like this isn't what no, I'm going I'm to hope happens. Oh my god! I'm dead serious. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, now later. that we've made right. our plans, we'll continue. Yes. Uh, so she goes through high school. She's done a few climbs, mm -hmm. uh, and then 1958 to 1962, she studies English uh, and American literature at the Showa American or not an American Showa Women's University. Uh, with the intent of becoming a teacher yeah teachers hell yes um and so she starts to get back into climbing then because she's got a little bit more freedom and mm -hmm. you know can do as she pleases and as then after should. graduating she joins several men's climbing clubs in the in the area and within a couple years she has climbed all the major mountains in japan including mount fuji can we talk about how, like, I know you're going to say this, but, like, it was a thing where they were just, like, looked down on women joining these clubs yes. because they were looking for husbands. I'm like, I'm sorry. You didn't want a bad bitch. You don't yeah. want a bad bitch. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah. No, it's, that's, that was a huge thing. That was a big, a big thing yeah. that she had to deal with was a lot of the dudes, like, some of them are really accepting and like, yeah, oh, another climber. Yeah. Great. But like a lot husband. of them. Yeah, exactly. Like her husband. He was so cool. But a lot of them were very much like, why is there a woman climbing with us? I don't want to climb with a woman. And they would straight up just not not do it with her, which is so annoying. First of all, so boring. So yeah. boring. Mix it up. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get some new patriarchal bullshit in here, please and thank you. Uh, but it is the 1960s and men were full of themselves back then even more. Um, but age 27, she marries Masanobu Tabe who is a fellow climber uh, who she met on an exped expedition to Mount Tanigawa. Uh, and eventually they got married, had two, uh, a daughter and a son, Noriko and Shinya. 
And anytime she went and climbed mountains, he would just stay at home with the kids. Like, you know, a good partner. <laughs> oh, oh, a wild that's concept. Awesome. Like it's yeah. Love him. Bare minimum. But 1960s, that's a lot. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, but I'm I'm not like detracting from it because like in the 1960s that was a huge deal and like fucking good for him for being like oh yeah yeah my wife's a badass rock climber she's she's going we got kids so like someone's got to take care of them she's still facing all that stuff while trying to get her climb on man yeah so in 1969 Mm -hmm. after dealing with all that bullshit she establishes the Joshi Tohan Club which is the first women's exclusive mountaineering club. Uh, and this, uh, the slogan of the club is very sweet and I love it. It says, let's go on an overseas expedition by ourselves. And I love that so much. It's, it's just, it's such like a break from the mentality of like, we have to do things for our husbands and like being housewives and all the, you know, like all the typical fifties and sixties bullshit. And it's just so, it's just so lovely to, to have that mentality that they got to have together. Like this great group of women just, we're going to go climb. And I'm like, yeah, yes. Yeah, so like she establishes it because, you know, other men won't climb with her because the, or they thought she was just there to find a husband and I can feel my eyes rolling for her. (laughs) (laughs) The iron, there was an interview where she talked about the irony of her finding a husband while climbing a mountain. She's like, it's not lost on me. I'm very aware. (laughs) Because she found the one, the diamond in the rock, the perfect good one. one. That's right. Oh my gosh. So, uh, so she started leading expeditions all mm-hmm. over the place. Um, in 1970, they go on their first expedition, climbing Mount Annapurna Three in Nepal. Um, so they they summit it by creating an entirely new route up the south side of the mountain. Oh, wow. uh, they were the first female group and the first Japanese group to ascend the mountain. And so, so usually with like big groups mm-hmm. in mountain climbing, I found out they don't all get to go to the summit. Because just because like oxygen supplies and like carrying that much oxygen for that many people to get up that high yeah. is just illogical and just can't happen because the tanks are fucking heavy. So they usually pick like two or three people. And so on that on that uh, expedition, Junko and another climber, Hiroko Hirakawa, were chosen to reach the summit with their two guides. Thank God. I, yeah. I, I, won't, I won't like that kind of would annoy me a little bit. You literally go right. 99.8% of it done. And it's like, but I, it totally makes sense for right. obviously safety. But I'm very glad that our heroine got to be the one to be like, exactly. tap, finish, boop. Yeah. Uh, so she funded her, all these climbing activities mm-hmm. by working as an editor for a, for the Journal of Physical Society of Japan, which is like a kind of a scientific journal that oh. took into account like all the nature stuff. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the first expedition all these women go on together. And they, mm-hmm. I think multiple of them have talked about um, how being on that, that climb really kind of made them reconcile the, tra- the traditional Japanese values of like quiet strength and not asking for help um and just like you deal with it on your own and you don't let anyone know it's hard and you like it's it's a quiet struggle and then to be on a mountain and climbing and you know pushing yourself mentally and physically having to having to reconcile that like need of like connection that can need of like support was a like a big thing for them and that kind of drew them closer together which i think is so cool you better shout help if you're starting to i mean there's there's really only two outcomes you continue or you don't yeah exactly so i love that that they're just like yeah no we figured it out together i love that yeah instead of like climbing in silence they were like acknowledging personal limits and accepting help from each other and asking for help from each other which i love friendship yes love that we're all about that here yes oh yeah we are uh so after that they're they're in nepal and then Mm -hmm. uh after annapurna three they decide to take on everest Ah, which like which is such a crazy jump for me which is like annapurna three is a big ass mountain but then they're like okay we've done this mountain everest time done like immediately (laughs) they're not like not k2 not anything else everest let's go go big or go home like Hell yeah respect the trip <laughs> so uh after yeah. after this they make like a sub team in the in the 
Joshi Ta- Tohan okay. Club. That's the Japanese Women's Everest Exposition, the JWEE, mm-hmm. with 15 members. And they're they're all from like a variety of professions. There are like computer scientists and there's, I think there's like an engineer and, it, and um, uh, Junko was a teacher and then there was another teacher. Like they were from all kinds of walks of life. Two of them, including her, were women or not women. God, they're all women. <laughs> Two of them, including her, were mothers. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. so yeah. And so a lot of the a lot of issues that they got a lot of issues that they had with getting like sponsorship and like funds was the fact that a lot of companies were like, you should be home taking care of your children and not climbing mountains. And they were like, Fuck. I tried really hard not to roll my eyes or say the first <laughs> thing that's coming out of my mouth. I know. And I don't want to because I know we can get a little mean. So that's fine. Yeah, in my face, will say it all. <laughs> we know <laughs> uh but eventually they do get funding from a newspaper the uh yes. the yamiuri shimbun and the nippon television network okay um so they so they they finally do get that uh but in the end they all did have to pay 1.5 million yen which sounds like a lot to americans but Please actually convert. that's yeah it's just around five thousand dollars in america Thank which you. is still a lot but it's not you know 1.5 million um so to so kind of that? offset those costs a lot of them you know would would take odd jobs Junko herself would teach piano um and she actually made some of her own equipment from scratch including like waterproof gloves from the cover of her car pants from old curtains Damn. and just kind of like just recycling and doing good stuff she made it work that's yeah, what she yeah, did. did she made it work she's like we're doing this on a budget <laughs> I don't care. We will go and <laughs> duct tape will be great. Let's go. We'll make this yes. work. Okay. Wow. Uh, so they submitted this application for a climbing permit in 1971, but it took four years to receive a formal spot in the climbing schedule. I think that's because so many people were starting to climb because remember 1953 was okay. when uh, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing um, Norgay first like climbed the mountain and that was you know it was less than Uh, 20 years ago for them when they were first putting in the application so i'm sure there were a ton of people that were like they did it i can do it better i can do it a different uh, way that makes sense okay that makes sense so i think that's why it took them that long to get a like a spot in the climbing schedule um but may 20 i think that words back words words work again may 1975 uh, they start going up the mountain with six Sherpa guides using the same route that Tenzing Norgay and Sir Edmund Hillary took 22 years earlier. Um, and they, it was a pretty big deal because they were, you know, an all women group in the 1970s. Yeah. And for, for a short time on their climb, they were co- accompanied by journalists and a television camera. They got a lot of attention when they flew over. It was a big deal. Uh, so May 4th, they're camping at around 9,000 feet okay. and an avalanche hits their camp. Of course it does. Right? (laughs) Naturally. And it buries five of the climbers, including Junko. And she is knocked unconscious and she's buried under the snow. Horror story. Death (laughs) saving (laughs) throw. Did they pass? Yeah. Okay. It was was like a big thing. And then luckily the guides dug her out and no one died. There was no like lasting, you know, fatal injury or anything like that. She was hurt. Uh, She could barely walk and had to spend two, like two or three days recovering. And literally, she gets buried by an avalanche. And then two or three days later, she's like, all right, time to keep climbing the tallest mountain in the world. Here who, we go. Who, who cast it in? What is it? Like luck or something? Yeah, she has, she's she got luck. Is there a cleric kind of that prayed to their deity and is just like, hey, undo, undo, please? <laughs> they got a party big enough for it. They should have multiple clerics, god damn it. Oh, gosh. Go for so it. So she's hurt. Yeah. She rests. She keeps going. Uh, the original plan was like before to send two of the women to the peak okay. uh, accompanied by one of the guides but altitude sickness takes several of them and oh. they're not able to carry enough oxygen bottles for two climbers so they have to basically choose one person to go better be my girl and it is it is Damn yeah right. they have they have a big like they have a big like <laughs> conference among themselves basically and one of them puts her forward as a nomination and everyone's like yep it's got to be her it better be like yeah this is the organizer i'm just saying she put all this shit together she planned all this shit she's yes. the one who's created this group and that like created this you know this community for them so it makes oh, sense i love that 
um <clears throat> the, uh, da, da, da. so she so she's going up the mountain and she's nearing the peak and then she gets to this thin ridge of ice that no one mentioned in any of the other like accounts of climbing it the accounts of climbing this route no one said anything about this like tiny ledge of ice that's super precarious and dangerous so she has to shimmy along it sideways makes it obviously but she described it as the most tense experience she's ever had. <laughs> Just think about that. Like, no, ice. I don't want to. I don't <laughs> Do want it, Amanda. To. I would shit a brick. I'm sorry to curse. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. Hell no. I, know. I freak out on roller coasters or like the <laughs> Ferris wheel. No. Yeah. I like, love mountain climbing, but like I've done indoor, but I haven't done <sighs> outdoor with elements and wind exactly the wind is the wind is whistling you can't like the air is so thin it hurts to breathe it's colder than a witch's tit and you're having to cross a thin ice bridge to get to the peak of the tallest mountain in the world like i won't lie that mm. is incredible like a part of me really wants to climb the other part of me is like scared shitless and the right. fa- i like you know what hell yeah just like the the fortitude the mental emotional physical fortitude you have to do focused, to see she... this this thing that no one's mentioned before focused. Focused. <sighs> anyway <laughs> i got i got real emotional about that part when i read it um awesome. but eventually may 16th 1975 12 days after being buried under an avalanche she makes it to the top with the assistance of her guide on and becomes the first woman to summit Mount Everest. Fuck yes. Amazing. So cool. Fuck yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love this. And of course, it's a huge deal. Like, As they get back to, Right. They get back down to Kathmandu, and there's a parade held in her honor. They go back to Japan, and there are thousands of cheering fans there to greet her at the airport in Tokyo. Oh, she gets messages from, like, royalty in Nepal, Ooh. the Japanese government. She gets a television miniseries about the climb. And she's like asked to make appearances all around Japan. But she hates the attention. She's super uncomfortable with all the notoriety. She talks about like her kid is terrified that like all the cameras are around all the time. And it takes her a long time to get settled back home. And, And she talks about how she would rather be remembered as the 36th person to summit Mount Everest rather than the first woman. Because in her words... I did not intend to be the first one went on Everest. Which she, is, uh, she just saw that top and she goes, bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, that one. I want that one. This is the one for me. Yes. So she's, okay. you know, she's got all this notoriety and she's doing all this incredible work. And she just wants to keep climbing. So she continues on her love of climbing. And eventually she is the first woman to complete the seven summits challenge, which is climbing the seven, the tallest mountains on every continent. Wow. Which is Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, which she climbed in uh, 1980. There's Mount Conagua, Concagua in Argentina. I believe, yeah, that sounds right to me. Concagua looks like, looks right. Uh, in 1987 i should have learned to pronounce all of these words before but i am bad at remembering to do things uh denali in alaska a year later in 1988 okay followed the year after that 1989 by mount elbrus something in russia and then mount vinson in antarctica in 1991 and finally to complete her her climbs in 1992 she went on that's the last one Punkak Jaya in New Guinea. Hell yes. Yeah. So she's she's summoning all these and she's doing her thing. Um, so in the year 2000, she goes to complete some post-grad work at the mm-hmm. Kyushu University, uh, focusing on the environmental impact of climbing, specifically the impact of trash left behind by climbing groups on Everest. Yes. I heard about, like, that's a big thing yeah um so during this time she's actually the director of the himalayan adventure trust of japan Mm -hmm. which is a group that's focused on the global preservation of mountainous environments but specifically the himalayas okay um and one of the big projects for her was to build an incinerator to build climber trash um on the mountain uh and making it kind of accessible and easy to find or like easy to easy to um deposit trash in 
um, and she led a bunch of cleanup climbs in Japan and in the Himalayas with her husband and her kids. So Aww. once her kids and husband, or once her kids got old enough, she and her husband would take them with them, which I think is very cute. Um, so by 2005, she had taken part in or led 44 all-female mountaineering expeditions. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, which is a ton. And then her, and so her biggest goal was to climb the highest mountain in every country. Mm-hmm. And by the end of her life, she had hit more than 70 of those. I think the, the, the highest is 70, the highest count was like 78 and the lowest was straight on at 70. But that's amazing. And this is, you know, oh she's, gosh. how old was she? Math. She was like 64 and in, in, in 2005. And th- that's like, she was still, cl- like, she was still climbing like a, like with the best of them. So to sort of have that much of a, I words hold graduating on graduating <laughs> high school in 2005 I'm like ah. I was in fifth grade in 2005 Ooh, that just aged me big time <laughs> oh shouldn't have said that <laughs> um, but it's so daunting like a lot of things that we've talked about is like like before our time I was like I was in high school when yeah. like she was doing oh man that is killer I love thinking about like like a person that you think of from the past knows what x specific thing like True. like like she knew what the internet was yeah which i know like logically i know that she should know what the internet is because i knew people that were born in the 1930s and of course they know what the internet is they use the internet but sometimes like that disconnect is so wild to me like she probably had a smartphone near the end of her life <laughs> anyway yeah that, no sorry I zoned out because i just <laughs> thought of it i was like oh, no. <laughs> It's like, you know how sometimes they purposely do uh, black and white photos when really color was around at that time? Yeah. And then when they colorize them, it makes it like, you're like, oh, this was a real, like a real thing because it's it's that disconnect of like, I know it's black and white pictures. It doesn't seem real or it it seems like it was a long time ago, but like, no, that was, you know, 60 years ago, which is not that long ago. No, it's not. (laughs) Oh my Lord. (laughs) Okay. Now that we've gone on that wild tangent, tangent. <laughs> that's the danger of putting you and me in a room together and just letting us go. <laughs> it's like tangent. I was city. like, are you sure you want me on the show? Cause we're just going to, you yes. know me. I just, no, I want it. That. I love it. You and I tangent together wildly. <laughs> and it's my favorite. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so uh, anyway, she never accepts corporate sponsorship. She Respect. saves most of the expeditions by making public appearances, guiding mm-hmm. mountains. Uh, guiding mountain climbing tours and tutoring local kids in music and English. Oh, that's adorable. I know. She even, like, like even back when she was preparing for Everest, she would tutor kids in piano, and I just think that's very cute. That is freaking adorable. That's just, like, a nice way, like, wanting to keep that aut- autonomy of, like, no, this is, I'm doing this how I want to do this. Like, then I would climb Mount Everest. Yeah. I just think that's nice, and it's, it's a good way to, like, keep her, keep her own, like, soul in it, I guess yeah um but her friends and supporters would like donate food and equipment so that she had I, I think she had a lot of support in that direction too which is also very lovely and makes my heart very warm <laughs> oh uh so she she wrote seven books between 1996 and 2008 okay uh, most of them about mountain climbing, climbing environmental environmentalism she was a huge environmental advocate as y- you would guess from being a mountain climber and creating and creating the incinerator to keep which influenced my picks and when i get into it i will explain in extreme detail go ahead um so there was the 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 great east japan earthquake in 2011 that we all remember um and after that she organized guided trips up mount fuji for the school children um who were affected by the disaster which i think is very nice um so 2012, she gets diagnosed with stomach cancer, which is super oh. sad. But she keeps climbing mountains. Like, she's going through oh. treatment and she's like, no, I'm going to go climb a mountain. You, Cancer was not telling her what to do. Mm-mm. No. Uh, Jul- as, uh, so, she, so she passed away in October of 2016, October 20th, uh, a month after her uh, 77th birthday. But in July of that year, she led a youth trek up Mount Fuji. 
literally what three months before she passed away she was like i'm gonna take these kids up mount fuji oh wow i love this amazing uh, it, like it, like oh Ugh. like i said she told life what she was gonna do you know what I, mean? yeah, nah, 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 I got this and the thing is she was not a large woman uh <laughs> everywhere i've seen <laughs> talks about her being somewhere between four nine and four eleven and just being like fuck everything i'm doing what i want that's why I that's power so much. but like avalanche and this and i'm like this is adorable yes yeah power See? like like what is it like a uh, big personality in a tiny package and you're like mm. you <laughs> <laughs> i am um, one of the smallest of mayday just FYI. you are the smallest of mayday yeah i am the i thank you <laughs> i'm trying to be cool i know i was like no, no. you're the you're no, i'm the. calling you out because i'm because you're the only one i'm tall with <laughs> i can't wait till we all have a photo and everyone's like tall um. as a tree <laughs> like sequoias and then you have you're this me. little bush <laughs> like me hi Hello, it's us. <laughs> um, tangents, God. <laughs> so okay, um, yes. Anyway, she so in uh, an asteroid was named after her. It's uh, oh, yeah six eight nine seven to Bay, and then in two thousand nineteen, a mountain range on Pluto was named after her. So oh. a lot of the a lot of the like celestial beings have like naming conventions for the um for the topography. And the naming convention for Pluto is historic pioneers who crossed new horizons in the exploration of Earth, sea, and sky. Oh, that's it right there. She deserves it! Yeah, that's, yes, at least. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh, that's such a, like, an inspiring kind of, like, I know. Put a limit this way. And I'm like, yes! Like, she, like, she lives on in Pluto. So cool. And, and like, our memories and our knowledge of her and her and Absolutely. all the incredible things that she did and the fact that she's been trying to keep mount or mount everest you know clean and safe and preserved <sighs> she's so cool and her yeah. her her big slogan was do not give up keep on your quest which Whoa. i think is lovely oh oh my god yes i am loving oh it's an incredible story yeah she's truly an incredible woman i as usual this is just the bare minimum of of research you can find so much more information about her on the internet please do listen to her talk about climbing mountains i watched a couple a couple like short interviews of her just talking about climbing mountains and the joy and like the the love she has it is so so evident Aww. and it's incredible and she's she's just seems like she was just a lovely human who just kept on following the thing that was the most important to her and we can all only hope that we do something that like, cool she's going on to the next climb man yeah oh i love that so yes your build hit me with it hit me with it i'm so excited okay so i don't know if you can see it i think i gave you you did let me mm -hmm. let me pull it up really fast because i like i like seeing it um come on come on computer here we go like... okay yeah i'm good hit me with it I was gonna, I was like, did you want to like how like we actually build it or like actually describe, you know, I'm just why gonna don't you dive do, Why don't you start off with, with your class and your subclass? I picked Ranger. Yes. I, I, I know like maybe possibly drew it on that. I'm like, the reason why I went with Ranger is because I felt like um, Rangers would like take, in my opinion, of my limited knowledge, d and I would I say, uh would you know would guide people and the fact that she guided uh groups of groups of women children and other people she led these climbs that's where i was just like she'd be a ranger in that kind yes, of aspect sure. and i read in the subclass if i remember <laughs> let me see if i'm back because i'm blanking out the subclass i chose for her because i was just like no, we're doing this. We're gonna yes. do this. What did I pick? Fighting style. Ah, uh, but 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 no, that's two. I know this. I know this. Architect. There we go. I did uh the Horizon Walker. Yes. Because I know it's I know it dealt with like portals and all that, but it really does expand, in my opinion, that kind of climbing of yeah. and also like you can disappear really quick in portals, and I feel like they would go always to the next adventure to find the next big climb. So that's that's how I kind of designed it. And I'm yes, very I, I was just like, no, that's what I'm going with. 
And then, of course, I was playing Perfect. with, like, ooh, what kind of weapons? And then, like, what spells? And I was just like, Frostbite and Magic Stone, by the way. Yes. I, uh, what, did, like, what did you end up with her stats? Okay. So with my kind of playing, uh, her sh- <laughs> uh, her least, this is kind of funny, her charisma is at a negative one with nine. <laughs> yep. Which I thought was very fitting since I would say all the resistance that she was getting from especially her early years of climbing, mm-hmm. I feel like it was like there was no way she could persuade that. So she was always at like at a disadvantage with that. Yeah. And then the next one up, and I don't want to sound insulting, uh, is her intelligence at an 11. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I did that is because I felt like wisdom was, she was more like, not that she wasn't, she was very intelligent, especially since she would play the piano. Like she was a teacher. She, yeah. she knew she, her stuff, but I kind of figured like more of a wisdom of like, especially with her knowledge of going on these climbs, she used that to influence all of like her books and all yeah. that stuff going mm-hmm. forward. <laughs> And then uh, for strength, uh, I was like, so wisdom was 14, intelligence is 11, her strength is a 15. Nice. And then her dex and constitution, I gave it 16. Well, yeah. that. So, because I was just like, uh uh-uh, uh, that will, that will, and apparently that luck of surviving an avalanche. <sighs> yeah. Um, what are, what are the like the big skill proficiencies you gave her? Ah. Uh, So uh, I definitely gave her a little bit more of the dexterity and acrobatics. So that's where I felt like, like, even though climbing does require a lot of strength, I felt like you have to be a little bit more nimble, especially Mm -hmm. you, it's not always like the will of the punch. It's the, just kind of climbing up there and keeping your mental sanity in that. Right. So I would say she definitely has proficiency in acrobatics, athletics uh let's see what else we got and survival that mm-hmm. one i purposely sure. was just like <laughs> we need that <laughs> that one for sure so those are her uh those are top three her big ones. Ones. nice yeah yeah uh what what um background did you give her ah let's see so i gave her the outlander wanderer so hey, me too no way okay yeah Obviously, i felt like it kind of says for itself where your memory with maps and geography layout right. terrain and all that so i felt like that it just naturally worked with that mm-hmm. aesthetic for the ranger i was creating nice did you have any uh feats for her or did you just do like skill bumps or uh oh no sorry. i did some feats i yeah. did some feats um uh, the first one I did was a uh, stat bump. So I bumped nice. up my actual strength and I bumped up the dexterity. So that's why right. it was 15, 16, 16. Uh, for the next one, I actually, w- I was stuck between tough, but the one I ended up choosing was athlete because that Ooh. I could add an increase to my strength, which is, mm-hmm. that's what I picked. And when you're prone, standing up only uses five feet of your movement and <sighs> climbing doesn't cost you extra movement and you can make running long jumps or running high jump after only moving five feet instead of 10. That's where I was just like, brilliant. That ties in. So good, dude. <laughs> oh, I love it. <clears throat> um, did you have any spells? What you said, frostbite and what was the Yes. Oh, uh, so for my cantrips, frostbite, I was very inspired by Everest yep. for that. And uh, I have Magic Stone. Do you know that one? Hit me. Remind me what Magic Stone is. I always, I always look at it and then I completely forget what it is as soon as I finish reading it. <laughs> no, no, no worries. So it is. You can touch one to three pebbles and imbue them with magic. So you or someone else can take a ranged spell attack with one of the pebbles by throwing it or hurling it in a sling. If thrown, <sighs> it has right. a range of sixty feet. If someone else attacks with the pebble, that attacker adds uh, your spell caster modifier, uh, not the attacker's. And on a hit, the target takes a bludgeoning damage of one die six plus your spell casting ability. Hit or miss, nice. the spell ends at the stone, and as it goes on. I just felt like rocks. That that I, I yeah. Just, I went <laughs> with fits. that hole. It fits. It fits. And then what do we got? Like uh, first level, protect against evil and good. Nice. Uh, Misty step is level two with again protection. Uh, level three, I add haste. And then at level seven, 
maybe I didn't pay attention. This is my fault. Etherealness. Oh, that Ooh, that's a good one too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That works. That's exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. So that those are the spells that I have. And of course, like quarter staffs. And I put hammers. Yes. <laughs> and I was like very adamant of like, no, I was thinking like climbing tools, like hammer, hand axe, the pick light and... hammer. Oh yeah. Yeah. And of course. Um I'm what are some of the what are some of the you said that she gets portal like portal work with her with her subclass? So she can detect portals. So once per short rest as an action, you can detect the distance and direction to the closest uh, portal within one mile of you. And nice. then you get primeval awareness. So that's really nice. We can uh, and what is it as a okay bonus action is magic stone too. Oh, nice, perfect. Yeah, Ethereal dude. Stone. Yeah, no, that is a uh, killer build. Oh, thank you. I love it. I almost want to play this character in an upcoming game. I that's the, that's the danger with like making all these characters is every time I build one, I'm like, okay, but I want to play them now. I like I them. never wanted to play a bard, and then I made who I, I made and Hajwana, and I also and um Josephine Baker, and I was like, okay, but now I have to play a bard. <laughs> That's, High charisma be damned. Is that wrong? Where I'm gonna be like, I have a brain trick that I'm in the next camp, and they're gonna be like, wait a minute, I oh, wait. This I've seen this build before. I've seen this build. So, Dude, yeah, fucking killer. Oh, um, I do have to say one thing that made me very happy was I got to hide in plain sight, which is I can camouflage myself yes. with the natural elements, and I just thought Love of like. Hide in plain sight. I just thought I was like, yes, that uh, that one. I don't know why it's a, such a silly side one, but I was like, ooh, that's it's, exactly. Right. It's good flavor. I know, spice, spicy, but, spicy, amazing. Um, oh, what did her hit points end up? Just because I'm always curious. See, that's where I was going. But tough. I would have gotten up to 114, but <sighs> level 12. Yes, I looked ahead. I was going to go to tough. I, I already planned this build. I know. But <laughs> current hit point max is 94. Hell yes. Amazing. All right. A great. Oh, oh, one more thing. Yeah. AC. What's her AC? I always like knowing that too. Oh, because uh, they also have leather armor it's yes. right now at 14. Hey, same here. Ah, yeah. what did cool. you do? I I gave myself a challenge. I was like, you don't get Ranger. Because Ranger Ranger what? is like, Ranger was the one that I was immediately like, Ranger, obviously. And sometimes I let myself steer into it. And there are some times that I'm like, no, you don't get to do that. <laughs> Be like, do something different. So I did Rogue 7, Wizard 3. Uh, okay, let's hear me. Walk me through this. So I'm hear me curious. out. So for Rogue, uh, she's a scout. Okay. And scouts um, are skilled in stealth and surviving far from the streets of the city. Um, you scout ahead of your companions on an expedition, which she always ended up being the one who got to the top of the mountain. Fair. Um, and that's like it, they're they're very they're very ranger e rogues. So I cheated a little bit by making the most ranger rogue I could, but it's still a rogue. Still. Rogue. Um, and then I chose for wizard, I chose the school of abjuration, which is like protective magic, which I think I, I, I moved towards that for her, for her later life of like environmentalism and conserv oh, um, conservationalist I moves. like that. Yeah. So she sat it out. Uh, da -da -da. I also gave her the lowest in charisma because she just wasn't, she was uncomfortable with all the attention Yes. and like to have charisma. I think you have to be a little bit okay with attention, not like super about it but like at least a little bit and she was so upset by it that i was you like gotta be like think. a little smooth not a lot yeah you gotta at least slide into a dm <laughs> i think i think she was probably like a like she spoke really well and like like had a lot oh, of I... like sentient opinions but it was i think it was just like it makes the most sense to me that she's like she doesn't want the attention yeah. she's literally in it for the rock climbing and just like doing what she loves um wisdom's a 13 Constitution's a 12. Oh. Intelligence, okay. because I had to make her intelligence high because yeah. she's the wizard. Wizard. So yeah. intelligence and dexterity are both 16. Oh. And okay. strength is a 14. Oh, very, very different builds, but yeah. very like on it. Okay. Yes. Walk me through this. What so else you got? for skills. So because she's a um because she's a rogue. She gets um, expertise, which means she doubles her proficiency bo proficiency bonus on some of her skill checks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then she also gets to add her proficiency, uh, double her proficiency bonus on nature and survival because she is a survivalist because of Scout. Right. So in the end, she has one, two, she has six skills that she doubles her proficiency bonus on, which is stupid. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so at level, you 10, build this. <laughs> at level 10, her arcana, her investigation and her nature are at plus 11. Damn. Her acrobatics, or I'm sorry, her athletics is at plus 10. And oh. her perception and survival are at plus 9. Oh my god. So dumb. So my ridiculous. Shit, my shit is two. Like, what is the, <laughs> okay, survival, yes. Perception, two. What, yeah. what, was, the, what was the first one you said? Uh, Arcana and athletics. <laughs> Four. It's all, it's all insane. It, like, rogues are busted, and I love rogues. <laughs> um so and then she uh, her other proficiency was insight and that's at a plus six which is not too shabby but it's the only one that didn't get expertise <laughs> let's, let's see for real it, it's like <laughs> you doubled up other way yeah uh, i'll swear so super oh, cool beautiful. super super good at skills super skilled at a lot of things awesome um i didn't give her any feats i just uh, just because, so, so for this build, since she's a seven and a three, she ah. only gets one, one ASI and or feet pump. So I gave, I just gave her an ASI and I think I did, I think I hit constitution and dex. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah, that's right. Good. Constitution nope. and intelligence. Those are the two I hit. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Which, yeah, it tracks and it makes sense for her. Um, for spells, she doesn't have a total lot of spells because she is a level three. Mm -hmm. Um, but I gave her dancing lights for, you know, the dark nights on the mountain when you need a little bit of, of light. Some more. Um, mending, which is... Oh, damn, that's good. You, you, need, you need mending on an expedition of uh I did not bump up my spells at all. Maybe I should add some more. Go ahead, continue. And yes. then I also gave her blade ward, which is another one of those spells that I read it and I know what it is and then I forget it immediately. Uh, so blade ward... <clears throat> um, it basically gives her resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks, which is real great when you're caught in an avalanche. I'm not gonna uh, lie. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't really fill out my spell slot, so I'm making notes now. <laughs> <laughs> for the builds for later. Well, yeah, so, so what was our one again one more time? Blade Ward. Blade Ward, gotcha. So, uh, and then I gave her shield, yes. you know, for more protection, mage armor, Pump the pump the AC, feather fall for when you are. Damn, that's good. Cool. <laughs> I'm, you know? yeah, I'm blatantly stealing that one from you. No, Go hit ahead, it, hit it. And then uh, burning what hands else? with also first level. For... Smart. Yeah, I, know I, I went the other one. direction. You went like inspired went by the the weather, and I went like fight the weather. I uh, did. Then, yeah, I like yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, and then the last two she has are spider climb and missy step. Classics, classics, yes. one and all. But they fit so well. They do. I'm very, okay. I'm very happy with them. Um, I gave I her your spells. primordial and sylvan because those seem like the mountains. They're the the languages you would need on a mountain, to me at least. Ooh. So, uh, how many languages do they speak? Uh, she gets, I think, three, and also thieves can't. Uh, so common, primordial, sylvan were the ones I gave her. Oh, I got at least I got five. We got five. Uh, common, uh, and because of ranger, like after a while, you can uh, uh, because I have like your favorite have, enemy and everything. I have like favorite terrain and all that favorite enemy. So for like my favorite yeah. enemies, I chose plants and fey. Ooh, nice. And then I totally added that on to give me elvish and halfling language. I didn't know. Yes. I was just like trying to think of like people that they were interact with so i'm like right. okay halfling elvish dwarvish draconic and then uh common nice because nice, i'm nice, like nice. if you can't talk to a dragon then what's the point dragons live on mountains man exactly <laughs> and you need to be polite even though their charisma sucks <laughs> but they can at least try to persuade the dragon to not be like oh you look Snack. delicious exactly right. but she she's tiny so she's like toothpick uh let's see she gets evasion and uncanny dodge which Dying. are great for avalanches um cunning action which gives her a little bit more movement right 
Um, and then for Scout, she gets Skirmisher. So a Skirmisher, you are difficult to pin down during a fight. You can move up to half your speed as a reaction when an enemy ends its Ooh. turn within five feet of you. And this movement does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Which is so, really? So cool. Okay. That's good. Scouts are neat as shit. I love them. Um, and then for uh, Abjuration, the usual arcane recovery, you can recover spell slots. Right, right. Um, abjuration Savant, it takes you half the time and half the gold to copy down Abjuration spells. Um, and then Arcane Ward, which is... Um, Sorry, I'm going to have to read it again because, no, no, again, no. I forget things. Uh, when you cast an Abjuration spell, you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward around yourself uh, that lasts until you finish a long rest. So the ward has a hit point maximum equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. So for her, it would be nine hit points of, <laughs> of ward. Um, and whenever you take damage, the ward takes the damage instead. Uh, if oh. the damage is reduced to zero, you... Uh, take whatever so like if you the damage carries over so if like you have like four hit points left of the ward and you take six hit points the ward takes four and you take two um once okay. the ward hits zero hit points it can't absorb the damage but the magic remains and so whenever you cast an abjuration spell at level one or higher the ward regains the hit points equal to twice the level of the spell so you can like keep giving yourself a little bit of extra shield which is so good for squishy wizards that's why I don't play wizards. I tried <laughs> you once. Up in it. You I did, had, and then you died. I, <laughs> I died, y'all. And you'll never hear that game because it was I was I was trash. I was You were trash. learning. It was your first game. You did it's, you did who, so well for playing a wizard, your first character, bro. I'm so sets proud of you. Up somebody with literally no knowledge of D and D and be like, okay, you're gonna play a wizard. And I'm like, okay. Well, and everyone's like you know what? You might like barbarian or fighter. I remember you... telling you that afterwards. I was like, "Hey, uh, you did a great job as a wizard. You did a really good job. Yeah. You seem like a person that would want to hit things." <laughs> oh, I'm so all for like less this, more this. <laughs> I'm like all for that. Hence, why you're playing a monk right now. Oh yeah, it's <sighs> the simple things. Smash bash. That's all I want to do. It's our girl. Uh, the last you... few things, equipment, I gave her, okay. uh, I gave her an ice axe, which I just, it's oh! just a reskin, it's just a reskin sword sword. It's just a reskin sword sword. It, like, I gave it the same abilities as a sword sword, but I called it an ice axe because I wanted to. Um, I also gave her, she gets daggers because she's a rogue, but I called them pythons because those are little things you stick in so you can ripe your rope through them as you climb the mountain. So mm -hmm. they're not daggers, they're pythons. And then she gets a short bow and I couldn't think of a good way to reskin that, so it's just a short bow. <laughs> Hold, please. Let's have some fun with this. Okay, short bow. Short. Oh, yeah, no, you're screwed. Yeah, it's like, I, I kind of was like, it's like a daisy chain, like those things that you put your feet in to climb, but it doesn't, it doesn't really work. So it's, it's or, just a short bow. Short bows are cool. Or let, oh, oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> Instead of like typical arrows, what is it called? A grappling gun type scenario? So you're you going like, full Batman here? Oh, yes, I'm going full Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to disrespect Bruce Wayne in this household. I don't in this household, so. we will, but you in your household. Uh, well, we hold on. Yeah, it is true. White privilege where he is a billionaire, and that's why he's able to get away with a bunch I've of I've got stuff. a lot no, of opinions on Bruce Wayne that we're I not going to get into right We're here. not going to get into it. Still has some of the best villains in superhero. That's true. Very I will, like, the, the villains are. <laughs> but, so bringing it back right like, yes <laughs> that's instead of the arrows being normal they'll be like grappling arrows and you I'm have to do it so they're fucking cool. perfect we made it work yeah we did um her climbing gear i reskinned they're just reskinned thieves tools fair um she gets an explorer's pack because of course she does she's an explorer and then leather the armor i oh, did, did a dungeon one yeah the, the only reason because you still get a little bit more i think it was like a little bit more of like pins or something like no it was just like a little oh. bit more climbing let me see I'm makes almost, sense it was like just the, the very slightest differences but yeah, yeah we went about it different ways i think we got, we got to the same place yeah um and so i i went through and tried to find some some fun magical items that she might have as well not all of these obviously but some of them oh i totally um, missed that go ahead and tell me more oh, i just i just i do it every time just for the hell of it 
Um, Armor of Cold Resistance gives you resistance to cold damage. Uh, Boots of the Winterlands, which I think uh, they don't, it doesn't slow you down in the snow. Uh, you mm. don't like, same with the resistance to cold damage. There are a couple other really cool things that go with it. I like it. Nice. Um, cloak of Displacement and uh, Bracers of the Defense because who doesn't Ooh. need, yeah, who doesn't need more like AC and also be harder to hit, especially yeah. as a rogue. How heavy rogue is that stuff? Stupid. I don't, I've genuinely actually never kept Consider. track of the weight of my equipment I in a D&D game do that. ever in my life. <laughs> that is so, because I think of like, okay, if they're going oh, no. to be, I'm dead serious, because I'm so <laughs> silly, like, like. No, I love like, it. That's why Snoopall doesn't have, well, obviously, because Bugsy, you want to be an arm and all that stuff. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. But I was just like, okay, how is it, how are they going to move leather? Because it's lighter. So I'm literally that a-hole. Oh my it's God. It's good. No, it's good that you're like that. Because I'm like, what's the most dramatic character choice I can make about my character? That's it. <laughs> like, like, like Shodi, I was like, Shodi has all this like random like shit that she doesn't need. They don't need, but they have it. Because it's like sentimental to what them. What do you have? What do you have? You're never gonna you'll find out later. I already shared one of them with you. <laughs> da- towards the end. Yeah, towards the end. Uh, you spoilers. will find. No, is it a spoiler? Because we didn't say I mean, what it's it not was. Really, yeah, it's, we didn't say what it was. <laughs> not even really a spoiler. It's just Amanda and I being excited about our D and D characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> back on track. God. Yes. Frostbrand, which is a weapon that deals cold damage and is. <laughs> Immovable rod, which you put it in place and it can't be moved, and that's got to be useful for a fucking mountain climber. And the necklace of adaptation, which I have to look at again because my brain doesn't like keeping track of things. I'm so upping up my... Just so you know, my ranger is gonna like. I forgot how like the spells. I forgot to fill that out, and I forgot to add a little bit more because I remembered like you found you. You're like spice it up, and I'm like (laughs) spicy. Um, so the necklace of adaptation, while you're wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment, super useful when you're on top of a mountain, uh, and you have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors, which I, you know, when you, when the air is like this thin. They are thin air, but also because I feel like the character you've created slightly ballsy would climb a volcano. Oh, hell yes. Maybe not if an active Ju- volcano, but definitely a volcano. Oh, yeah. If Junko Jun- Tomei clomb, clomb, climbed Mount F- Fuji. Exactly. Mount so Fuji. that's what I'm saying. That, that works out perfectly. Yeah. Oh, nice. So that's that's my that's my build for, for her. She was, oh, her AC was 14 and her current hit points were uh, 68 because Squishy Wizard. Um, damn and rogues, now you remind me why i don't do wizard yeah and i mean like rogues rogues aren't super hardy either they're just hard to fucking hit so but yeah that's, my, ra- my ranger can take a fall and at least survive <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's, like, but i have a feather fall so maybe i can too ah, damn it you do have feather fall <laughs> I'm adding that. That's I don't know what level that is, but that's it's so like com- it's like a it's like a low level spell. Good, add it because let's you climb and is it a ranger fall? spell? I feel like rangers get feather fall, don't they? We don't need to look this up right now, but I'm going no. to. I'm like I'm like looking through mine. Like I'm like okay, I have land stride. Okay, so difficult terrain is no extra movement to me because I'm like <laughs> you can't have feather fall. Sorry, r- ranger. <laughs> what? Bullshit! No, hold on. Yeah, for some reason it's not on the on the ranger spell list. I don't believe you. Well, go look Feather for fall. yourself then. I'm looking. <laughs> As I'm Amanda's not happy. Looking, I'm gonna close us out so you don't have to listen to us go on our tangents anymore. Fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, my dear friend. This was so <laughs> terribly fun and so terribly chaotic. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons we're like, maybe we should like. This so is the danger of putting you and I in a room together. Yeah, no. We've said this once, we'll say it again. <laughs> we'll uh, just go. We will. Um, Amanda was the first person in Mayday that I spoke to, actually. Which is... <gasps> oh, yeah! At I the know. audition. And At we got audition. to audition twice together. Together, yes. And I was, like, super intimidated. I'm like, oh, they're so, like... <laughs> like, no, no like, Stop. so good. I also had no idea you had never played before that. Like you, you exuded so much fucking confidence and like knowing what the fuck you were doing. I was like, oh yeah, she's been playing for ages, has to be. And then you were like, I've never played before. And I was like, (laughs) the best thing about not knowing anything is you don't know, you have no judgment. You're like, 
oh you could do that all right i think i remember like i'm just side really quick and i'll wrap it <laughs> i remember like i think in our first game my character ended up licking something and got you high did. yes you did you licked some goo you licked some goo so and you got high like <sighs> memories that's all what goes in my brain y'all and i'm like uh yeah i think they're gonna go ahead and lick it because they're kind of a dumbass and it smells interesting you had low intelligence so it makes sense yes oh boy oh man thank See? you so much for hanging out with me i love <laughs> we you gotta wrap this up before we keep going yes we could we could literally sidebar all night but is there anything that you want to you want to plug or shout out before we before we wrap this chaos up i do yes hit it. hey everybody if you notice on fridays we're uploading a new thing called ashoka and <laughs> there is an amazing character where you literally sing the song, Shody's got a melody in I my hate head. You. I hate you. I take back saying I love you. I hate you. I sang that so many times while we were recording. I feel kind of bad. I know Eli cuts them out, but I know for like a solid sure gonna be intro. In I think like around like episode eight, we just kept, oh. we just sang it. You were you should. pissed. <laughs> I, I love you all very much. And I didn't think through Shodi's name before I named them Shodi. No. And then you and Caleb did that. And I was like, you fuckers. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, please listen to Ashoka. We've been yes. having so much fun sharing it with you guys. You all. Uh, there is so much more to come. It. I say this every time, but the chaos doesn't end. Mondays, oh. join us for join Aaron as he plays yes. the sheep farm. He's been playing Arkham lately. I don't know if he finished it tonight because we were... Uh, it's Monday when we're recording this, and he was uh, he was still playing when I started recording, so I don't know if he finished it. He was fighting Harley Quinn. No, he wasn't fighting Harley Quinn. He was fighting Poison Ivy. Anyway, unimportant. Uh, and very, it's, I mean, it's important, but it's not important to this explanation. Anyway, yeah, Batman's uh, amazing. Tuesdays, join us uh, when Sergio leads us through the Ironlands for yes. Iron Storm, Eye of the Storm. Um, Wednesdays, alternately, it's me and a friend and heroes you should know so don't forget that in two weeks um and finally on fridays as amanda was saying ashoka precious cargo my child and my heart and my friends yes. this has been the biggest tangent of all <laughs> this whole episode has been yeah. the biggest tangent of all. i hope you are still with us and if you're not i understand Fair. i hope you had fun though and thank you for hanging with us as always thank if you, you think of a hero that you want us to cover yeah. please drop it in chat if you think of a system that you want me to try and build characters in, please drop that in chat too, because I love building stuff in D&D, but I am very aware that there are tons of other games that I'm woefully, dreadfully unaware of and want to be, want to know about. So yeah. hit us with those. Have a lovely week. Take care of yourselves. Um, goodbye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.